And what is up all of my beautiful wanderers of the world? Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. In case you guys did not know, my name is Walter. I'm a flight attendant and you guys are not joining me on another layover. Instead, you guys join me at my humble abode where I thought I'd sit down and talk to you guys a little bit about one of the more frequently asked questions that I get, which is how to manage your time as a flight attendant and what are your schedules really like? So if this is a subject you guys wanna know a little bit more about, go ahead and continue watching. But before we get into the video, don't forget to have, hit that subscribe button. My friend, we would love to have you in this little club. It is called the Wanderer Club. All you got to do to join is hit the subscribe button down below. I'm going to keep going like this because I don't know exactly where it is in my camera because it's a little reverse. So I don't know whether it's on this side or this side, but you know, it's going to be somewhere. It's big, it's red, you can't miss it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button to join the club. We'd love to have you. Also, don't forget to like and don't forget to comment any questions questions you might have down below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. No? Okay, let's go. So as you guys may or may not know, one of the biggest perks of being a flight attendant, besides the obvious travel benefits, are flexibility. A lot of people are drawn to the job because of this, whether they have children, whether they have, you know, family obligations or any type of obligations outside. A lot of people have second jobs doing this. So they are obviously drawn to this profession because it affords you a lot of flexibility to handle a lot of things outside of work, if that makes any sense. We do not work nine to five. We are not in an office. And like I said, that just draws, that draws you in and drew me in. I love that aspect of it. But one of the biggest things that comes with that is how to manage your time off, how to be strategic with scheduling and with all the tools that are afforded to you um, to get the time off that you need. Before we get into the, all the specifics, I do want to say that I have only ever worked for one airline. Line. So I don't know exactly how all the other airlines work, um, but I do have a feeling that this is uh, pretty much general information that can be applied to any airline that you choose. One of the more um, things that separates my airline from others is that we are not full reserve. We do have six reserve days a month called our A days, um, but we are not full reserve. We do get our schedule, mine particularly comes out on the 19th of every month uh, for the following month. So it'll come out July 19th for all of August. So I do know what I'm gonna get and I do know what days I'm gonna be working uh, the month previously, if that makes sense. I think it does. So, with that being said, I can only really guys, give you guys um, hardcore advice on my specific airline. Um, if you guys do have any other questions though, I will be more than happy to answer them in the more general sense from the information that I picked up from uh, the flight attendant. So yeah, if you are planning on working on another airline, let me know and I'll, I will try and get the information to you, so yeah. So with that being said, like I said, um, for specifically for my company, there are a lot of tools that we are afforded to get time off. Uh, one of the most used tools and one of the more best tools to use for us is called the swap board. Um, that is where all flight attendants go to post any trips that they may want to swap or that they may want to drop. Now dropping is a great method. Um, basically what that means is I have a trip that I necessarily, not that I don't want to work, but I may have an obligation that day. I may not, I may not want to work it or, you know, something might come up. So I'll go to the drop board. I'll post it for drop specifically. And any flight attendant who is off, um, who sees that as a desirable trip that they want to pick up, they can go pick it up easy peasy. I then drop those days. So that means that I'm off those days and that flight attendant will then be working. Uh, one of the more commonly used things is the swap board where I will go to the swap board, post a trip, um, post what parameters. So let's say the dates that I want to work, uh, the number um, the number of days I want to work because as you guys know, we have one day trips, two day trips, three day trips, and there are four or five and six, but those aren't as frequently used or frequently given out, I should say. So the most commonly um, number of days of trips that we have are three day trips. So I'll be using that um, for all of my examples. So say I have a three day trip on July 13th. Um, I can't work uh, July 13th, but I can work July 16th. So what I'll do is I'll go to the swap board. I'll post um, that I 
I post a trip that I have. I'll go say, oh, I, um, you know, I would like to work July 16th. I would like to work a three-day trip. Um, and those would be the parameters that I put for that. A, a flight attendant who is also trying to work maybe July 13th, they can't work July 16th, will go to the swap board, put in the dates that they can work July 13th. They'll look at my trip, say, oh, this is a trip that I want to work. They'll contact me either via email or text message. I have this trip, do you want it? They'll send me a copy of the trip. I'll say, yeah, sure, that works great for me. Um, we will go to the swap board and we will each put through. It's a little bit more complicated than that of the actual putting through. You have to put in your password and all that stuff. But we'll put in the trip information and the, the system will swap it for us. So therefore, I will be off July 13th. I will be working July 16th. And the opposite for that other flight attendant, they'll be off July 16th, but they'll be working July 13th. So you can do that with days. You can do that with trips. Um, say I have a Vegas, I hate Vegas, so I'll go and swap it out for a London, you know, or another European transoceanic trip, whatever. So that's a little bit of a broad um, example, but that is the most frequently used method uh, that flight attendants use to get days off or to swap trips around. Um, one of the other things that we are afforded are PPT. So every year they give us, a, the, our company gives us specifically 52 hours of PPT um, that is paid personal time. Um, everything is run on seniority and as a flight attendant. So seniority is key. So I, the more seniority you have, the more likely you are to get PPT on any given day. Sometimes it runs junior, sometimes it doesn't, like normally around the summer and during the holidays it doesn't run very junior. So you may not get it, but you know, you always put in for it if you need that day off and you never know, um, they could award you PPT. So basically I'm off for that trip, but I am still getting paid for it, paid personal time in case I didn't mention it. So that is another method that is commonly used. Um, another method is just straight trip drops. Um, those go really senior as well, but you never know. Um, if it is a day that's not very busy, there are a lot of flight attendants on reserve, like I said, our A days. If there are a lot of flight attendants on A days that have not been used, the company may drop a trip that is, you know, you will put in to drop your trip. Um, and the company may or may not grant that trip drop. And so then it is straight drop. You don't get paid for it, but you get that day off. So those are the commonly, method, commonly used methods of uh, flight attendants who need to drop a trip. Now, as I just mentioned, guys, seniority is key um, when working as a flight attendant. Basically, the longer you've been working um, with your company, the better your schedule will be, uh, the better your time off. If you do desire, time off will be like you'll be able to hold a lot more. Um, you'll be able to hold a longer period of days off. Whereas the more junior you are, you know, you're not getting, you always normally get about three days off, especially at my airline. I don't know exactly how it is with reserve, but for my airline, you normally typically get about three days off and then you're working about three days on. This is especially indicative of the summer. During the winter time, you might get a lot more days off because obviously there's a lot less flights to operate. So with that being said, as a three-year flight attendant, um, my schedule, I think I've actually been seeing the light, um, which basically means that I've been holding a lot more better uh, than what I've held in the past. Um, this is the first summer that I've held Transoceanic. As you guys knew, I flew Amsterdam uh, for Memorial Day. I flew London um, for July 1st, and then I flew Madrid July 4th. Those three trans Transoceanics were um, all awarded to me based on my bid. So another frequently used tool by flight attendants to manage time off and to manage your schedule is called open time. So basically open time is a um, part of the system where any trip that is called out for, any trip that is um, PPT awarded or TDOT awarded will be dropped into what we call open time. So if I have a trip that necessarily I don't want to work but it is the same day um, that I'm working so basically, if I'm working a trip on the 13th and I don't necessarily want to work that trip, but I can't work the 13th, I'll go into open time and see if there are any other trips that I would like to work. So say I have a nasty like four leg, four leg, four leg, two short layovers. I can go into open time and see if there are any um, trips that are like two, two, two with long layovers or anything else that might fit my parameter. Say the trip that I have is late, um, is a late release, like 
9 or 10, but I need an early release, I can go into open time and see if there are any trips that have an early release for that same day. I don't have to call any flight, or don't have to text or email any flight attendants. I can just go into the system and do that and it'll be an automatic thing. Now, open time is an ever-changing thing. Like I said, you know, it changes like every minute or so. So, you know, I'm always constantly checking the open time as a flight attendant. All I can guarantee you, most flight attendants are constantly checking open time just to see if there are any other trips that they would like to work. So, that's another frequently used tool. All right, guys, so that pretty much sums up uh, flight attendant scheduling and how we manage our time off. Like I said, being a flight attendant is one of the most flexible jobs that you can have. It does, it is all up to you, however, to, to work your schedule. I know a lot of flight attendants who are always on it, who can work their schedule so that they can get the most amount of days off that they can. Uh, I know a lot of flight attendants like myself who are pretty lazy when it comes to um you know uh managing your schedule i normally work uh what i get like i said i've been releasing the light lately i love the trips that i've been um awarded um when my schedule comes out so yeah i've been pretty happy i don't have much of a life outside of being a flight attendant so um i normally don't need to swap many days you know every so often there will be something that i want to do with my family or maybe my friends but for the most part i you know i'm pretty just chill when it comes to doing that i think that's why i really lasted because i don't have much of a life and i think that that's really it <laughs> except for you guys <laughs> you're really all that i have all right guys i really hope that you found this video very informative if you guys do have any other questions please comment down below and i will be more than happy to ask them as i just disclosed to you i don't have much of a life so i'm always monitoring my comments just always like please just just give me give me anything to work with here all right guys that is going to do it for this video i hope you all enjoyed it and found it a little bit informative uh, informative at least don't forget to comment down any questions that you may have down below i would love to answer them if you have any insight if you feel like i missed a point go ahead and feel free to let me know and i will be sure to include that in another video uh, before i go don't forget don't forget to hit that little subscribe button down below like i said it's going to be right here for your convenience right here i'm putting right there and don't forget to watch another video bro you know you want to you know you want to see more of this face right here so i'm going to leave it right here and don't forget to subscribe and here is another video for you to watch before you go to work before you go to that party before you go to sleep whatever you're about to do watch another video before you do it so go ahead and watch another video and hit that subscribe button all right guys i love you so much and i will see you on the next one Boom.